Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee and Darts. Uh, we're on this channel. We talk about darts and we drink some coffee because it is 7 a.m. where I'm at. And I know typically people are like, coffee and darts? Seriously? Aren't you supposed to drink some kind of alcohol while you play darts? Well, not us. We like to keep our minds fresh and straight so we can throw the arrows properly and not be bogged down by liquor brain, except for in the evenings, because again, it is morning time, and that's why it is coffee and darts, and today we have an exciting show. So again, if you're not familiar with the show, uh, Coffee and Darts, we do talk darts, we drink coffee. Uh, it is 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time every Tuesday morning, an occasional show thrown in. Uh, depending on when a guest can join us or what topics hit the news reels in regards to darts. So I just want to say thank you if you are new watching this or watching on a replay. And for all of you that are nice enough to catch us every Tuesday morning, much appreciated. Why don't you go ahead and give me a ton 80 there in the comments. Let me know that you guys are watching. Don't forget to do the whole like, smile, thumbs up, all that fun social media pieces that need to be done occasionally just so that i know that you're there all right so today we've got an exciting show we're going to talk a little bit right now about the uk open and james wade who is always my underdog to win he's my dark horse at every tournament and i'm going to explain why and i'm going to explain to you why i think he has been so consistent over three decades he has literally won a major televised major in three over three decades at least one each decade um, and then we're going to get into our interview today. It is with Boris. Uh, Boris is a Russian player. Um, uh, Kolstov. Boris Kolstov. He recently got his tour card this year. Uh, been playing darts for a little while. Just signed with Shot Darts. And I got an opportunity to talk with Boris why he was at the UK Open. Um, so it is a shorter interview than I typically do. I try and do like an hour long just to really dive in and, and pull stuff out. But unfortunately, when I interviewed him, <clears throat> it was very late at night there and he still had to go have dinner and uh, have a meeting with his manager. So we got about 20 minutes in uh, and then I let him go so he could go do that. But Boris is a, a young darts player. I can say that because he's in his early 30s and when I uh, got an opportunity to interview him um at during the uk open which is this past week weekend and find out what he's got going on find out uh the transition over to shot what that was like uh and just seems like an exciting uh gentleman so we're going to get into that but first let's talk a little bit about the uk open which was an exciting uh exciting event for me we saw some uh, interesting things we saw some players that were ready to play this year we saw some players that just aren't there yet peter wright um, don't know where he's at, if it's a mental issue that he's, you know, he's got some stumbling issues going on over that, um, or what may be going on with Peter, but Peter just isn't getting out of the blocks very well, and he's going out of tournaments very early. Um, we did see some exciting things in regards to, on day one, we saw a nine darter, and I just blinked on the young man um, that did the nine darter in his first round, got past his first round, into his second round, <laughs> The player he was playing hit a nine darter on him. So literally, uh, we saw two nine darters in day one, and the same player was involved with both nine darters. One him throwing, one him receiving. Uh, we did see Martin Schindler um, go against the tallest PDC player. So we had the shortest PDC player going against the tallest PDC player, um, which – was kind of an interesting thing. They showed some of that match. It was on one of the outside boards, and it was kind of interesting to just see the difference in the throwing style for these uh, two gentlemen. Of course, uh, Martin Schindler kind of reaching up for his throw, and this other gentleman, it was like he was just like handing the dart to the board. Um, so that was kind of an exciting little piece there. RVB, you know, his comeback got derailed by a fireman. Um, you know, I don't think the Scots like him that much. Um, in any way, he got derailed by a, a fireman who uh, did really well in this tournament, uh, another new tour card holder as well. So I think it was a fun tournament. And as we got deeper and later into the tournament, I, I made a comment on someone's page, Bob, that had talked about, I think it was the semifinals, who was left for the semifinals. And I said, James Wade takes it. I say, Wadey takes it. 
Um, I think he just has the game for the UK Open. These longer, slightly longer format type things do well for him. And here's my thing with uh, James Wade in regards to why I think he's been so consistent or in winning over the last 30 years that he's been playing, or at least within the last three decades. He's, I don't know that he's been playing for exactly 30 years, but probably close to that. Um, and I would be willing to bet if there were some records, you know, if we went back and looked at stats, um, there's there's a reason why he's consistently winning, and it's 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 his consistency on the doubles. He is arguably one of the most consistent, if not the most consistent, doubles player as far as being able to hit the out. And with that said, his ability to hit the high outs, the ton pluses, the 100 plus, you know, the 154s, the 164s, the one, uh, I don't know that he does a lot of 170s. I don't think he leaves a lot of 170s, but, the, you know, the, the, the 121s, is just his ability to knock out the ton plus outs when he needs to is astonishing. Um, he's just able to do it more often than anybody else. Uh, he's not the highest scorer. His average isn't in the the hundred pluses typically. Um, it's his ability to hit that particular out when he needs to, and he's always very consistent on his own legs. He, from what I've seen, typically wins his leg, and then where he beats you is he's able to hit that ton plus out when it's on your leg when he's definitely far behind and you should have that leg you feel confident that you're going to get potentially six darts at an out and uh it doesn't happen because he hits these high outs that's just his it, it, it's his mo it's what he's been able to do for such a long time he's not a big power 180 140 thrower um and he's just very consistent on all of the board especially a lot of the the, the other trebles he just hits him when he needs to. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if you, you know, if he gets on where he's got 40 left or 20 left, I mean, the percentages go so high that he's going to hit that. Um, just a great player in my mind. I've always liked him. But he's always my dark horse to win a tournament. Um, you know, my favorites, of course, being Peter Wright or, or Gerwin Price. I've been a Gerwin Price fan since he came into the um PDC, that was Mrs. Atomic in the background getting some water. So I'm, I'm reading comments here. There, hey, afternoon, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. So back back to it. I get off track, you know. Um, in regards to Wadey, I think it was just a deserved win. Um, and I think he'll win a couple more this year. He's not the guy that's going to go, you know, he's not going to be the, the best player in the world. I don't think he's ever going to have that money aspect. I think there are times when he certainly is the best player for a stretch. Uh, and I think, you know, we'll see him consistently do well. We've got another super series coming up. We'll see if the UK plays well for him into that, but because they're kind of shorter formats, um, you know, he, in, and I don't know that he, I don't know if it's a mindset thing. I, my guess is he doesn't win any of those. I think some of the other guys come in and, and they look at them as tournaments that are easier to win. I think there's a lot of guys that come into these majors that go, okay, if I can just get to the semis, if I can just get here, that's great. Your top echelon players look at like, I need to win this tournament. And that's kind of the difference in a mental set. Speaking of getting to a quarterfinal, semifinal, and a final, uh, look at Luke Humphreys. Here's a young kid, second year on tour, and uh, got to his first televised major final in the UK Open, crushing MVG. I mean, that was an incredible match if you go back and watch that it's reminiscent of chizzy dominating mvg in the world championships uh i just was extremely impressed with what we saw there out of uh luke Humphreys. but it's like kind of like what chizzy did is there there was a peaking during that it's like i'm playing mvg i'm going to put on the best i possibly can and he does and he wins and then you get to the next and admittedly he had like five minutes in between those two matches from the semifinals to the finals, he had roughly a few minutes to be prepared. And of course, James Wade had time to uh, mentally get, get into it. Um, it would have been nice to see Luke pull some of that excitement over. That's always the interesting thing to me is you play super well in one match and you go right into another match. You should be able to take that with you. I think it's the mental aspect of you're playing 
you know, arguably one of the best darts players ever. He's not currently number one in the world. He's had a rough year and a half um, in regards to, he still won tournaments. MVG is still going to win tournaments. He's still going to win majors. I just don't think he's the player that everybody needs to worry about. I think the field is at this point in time, fairly even. There's not one player out there that everybody goes, oh my gosh, I'm playing him. Um, you used to feel that way against MVG, but I think some of the younger players still look up to him and look at the excitement of beating an MVG. And that's what happened. And then he came up against James Wade, who plays a completely different style game. And Luke Humphreys just got just shellacked um, in that final. But he made it to a final. He did well. He's going to be able to take the experience with him. Um, and he looks good. He's lost some weight. He's taken a lot of heat for being an old guy in winning the youth um, championship, you know, being the youth champion at a a much older age than people think should be like he should have just been in the pdc um that was something that happened you know two years ago last year and um i think it's wrong because he was within what the parameters were for that particular tournament and, and for the youth championship um whether they adjust those and change those maybe they should but uh, I know he took some heat for that, but he's shown that he can play and he made it to his first televised major, which a lot of players never even make it that far. So good on him. And Justin says people always play their best against MVG. Uh, I don't, I agree with you and I disagree with you, Justin. Um, I think people, certain darts players look to beat him because they, that's a level that they're trying to look at. That that's some, And there are certain players that don't, necessarily play as well against him um peter wright for one peter wright has never really played well against him um and i don't know why i don't know what it is about mvg style that gets to peter wright um peter just hasn't i I don't know if the mystique of that is is gone now that he won the world championship a year ago and he's you know peter's not um or i'm sorry mvg's not playing to the caliber that we have seen him play and at the same time the level of play has raised but I will say Peter Wright, as far as this year, has kind of you know, come out of the blocks, not swinging. Um, people that have been able to, to maintain uh, what we saw last year, of course, Gerwin. Gerwin you know, did well. Um, uh, why am I blinking on a name now? Um, Jose de Sosa did well. Um, there were another, a number of other players that came out of the blocks uh, decently, considering you know playing last year. Um, Devin Peterson, that's who I was thinking of. Devin really, you know, he shined. Um, you know, this is a guy that was that was going to quit a couple years ago, and then you know got into got a coach, got into the, got into it last year. Really hammered well on the board, and and you know still is doing well. So excited to see what goes there. Just wondering, does your here's a question from uh, Evan? Does your son still use the Michael Smith Star Silver Darts because I have them? Uh, yes. He does. Those are his favorite barrel. He does not. It's not that he doesn't like my barrel, but he just loves the the shape and feel of the Michael Smith Silver Stars. Um, we we have some of the other Michael Smith style barrels, but he, those are those are his go to barrels. Um, he's also interesting because if he can't find them because he left them in his room when he was playing there or something, he'll just pick up another set because he's too lazy to walk and go get them, and he'll play with whatever's readily available but i will say that those are right now still his favorite Uh, michael smith unfortunately michael's you know just to talk about him briefly is putting too much on himself when it comes to tournaments he he's he needs a televised major and then he'll relax and we'll see him play so well and he'll do so much in in his darts career he's just that getting over that hump right now is just brutal for him and you can see it every tournament he's going in with the i have to win it it's not so much of, hey, let me go have some fun and play. Um, and I really hope that he'll get over the either the stress of that this year or get that win so that he can relax. Because I think Michael Smith is a phenomenal player. He's uh, just quick but very smart You know, with his quickness. Uh, he, he counts well. He's very accurate when he's on. Even when he's off, he's fairly accurate. His problem is he's, he's just off enough where he's missing – segments that he's trying to hit, you know, by a wire, typically on the doubles. Um, and his, 
his level of play from a scoring perspective, he has moments where he's really, really solid, hitting a lot of, you know, high um, ton 80s, 140s, 171s. I mean, he's hitting good darts. The problem is it, he has it in spurts, and then it kind of it dives out. So, but very much a big fan of his. And, yes, Dylan is, is still, you know, loves watching him and uh, loves his barrels currently still. So. There you go to answer that question. So let's get into our interview. Let's see. It's, you know, it's not a super long interview, but let's get into our interview. Let's talk a little bit about Boris. Uh, Boris, again, is a Russian player. Um, been playing for a couple of years. Been on the, um, uh, he was in the World Darts Federation. I think he played one or two tournaments there. And then he's played um, uh, on the development tour. And played in a couple of PDC World Championships, you know, going out round one. He played in last year's UK Open going out round one. This year he, you know, got to round two, so he's doing better. Uh, he's got a good management team. It's the same management team that Jeff Smith has. And speaking of which, uh, when Boris went to the World Cup, which he represented Russia, unfortunately they pulled Wales first round. And as we all know, Wales won this past year. Um and by the way, guys, take a second and hit the little like button, the heart button, all that other fun stuff. Um, I'm supposed to say that throughout the things. And I forgot to thank my sponsors at the beginning of the show. What an a-hole I am. Guys, I really do have some really wonderful sponsors. I was excited to get into this, and I was um, playing with the kids prior to jumping on here real quick. Um, but I do want to thank Shot Darts, who Boris happens to be sponsored by. It's a new sponsorship for him. It's a new barrel sponsorship. But Shot Darts, who makes literally artwork that we get to throw. And, of course, Magicware, beautiful jerseys that Magicware does. The version 3 coffee and darts, so the spring version, will be on the website as far as pre-orders go um, today or tomorrow. And we'll be listing that jersey. It's a beautiful, beautiful jersey. Uh, Jennifer Mounts designed it. It looks really, really good. I'll have one in to be wearing here shortly. So those will be available. And of course, Magic Wear is a sponsor. And uh, Atomic Darts sponsors. And of course, they have the B-52 barrel uh, available at AtomicDarts.com. Uh, soft tip and steel tip are now available. And additional weights and steel tip are on the order. And I got to thank Condor uh, Flights and Shafts, the Condor Axe I currently play. That's what I play. That's what Dylan plays. And we love that flight shaft combination. All right, back into Boris, who, again, is sponsored by Shot. He recently was sponsored. Uh, he'll be adding his barrel to the Viking lineup that Shot has because Boris is known as the Russian Viking. Um, and really good guy, so I got to sit down and talk with him. In regards to being you know, the Jeff Smith connection I was throwing in earlier, um, if you did not know, and Boris talks about this, uh, it, in our interview, but literally prior to going over to the um, World Cup, his dad got sick, and they thought it was going to be something you know s relatively easy to deal with, and so everybody said go to the tournament. But on his way to the airport, he got a call from his mom, and he explained this in in our interview. But his dad passed away, um, and he still you know went to the tournament. He was coming from he had landed. He had landed for the World Cup and, and was on his way to his hotel when he heard. Um, and he uh, still you know, went ahead and played the tournament, but that was heavy on his heart. And he talks about that a little bit. So I did have to record this interview. Again, uh, the background is not this background. You guys are like, what's going on in your background, Matt? My um, boom darts cabinet is due any day. It shipped last week. It's due either today or tomorrow. And we're ripping this wall, all this stuff off the wall and putting the boom darts cabinet in. And then where the flag is, um, there's going to be a TV going in there. And I got a little couch going behind me. And we're going to make this more of a hangout darts kind of dark cave hangout situation where kids can play um, out here and leave mom alone. And it'll just be a fun place to play darts. And because the cabinet I got has holds three dart boards and rotates, I can take dart boards like you see over here off the wall because I have three of them on the wall currently. I've, you know, there's four dartboards I work with or play with. I got those on the wall. I've got all the camera hooks up, all the stuff. So I can start playing everybody online like I want to. There were some components I didn't have 
um, that I just don't want to go buy because they're in the cabinet. So anyway, that comes in any day. I'm excited because I'll be playing you guys. That's going to be part of the deal, but that's why everything looks like a mess right now. So let's get into this interview. Let me pull it up here. And if you're not familiar with Boris, I um, recommend check him check him out. But again, he is with um, Shot Darts now. And I need to find my file here. And we'll get it set up here. All right, guys. So this is my interview with Boris. Uh, and I was in my office when I did this interview. So here it is. Everyone, thank you so much for joining Boris and myself here at Coffee and Darts. Um, really excited to have Boris on. He's a new player with Shot Darts. He just signed with them, so they're creating his barrel currently. It's going to be part of the Viking line because, as you know, Boris's nickname is the Viking, uh, which I'm a huge fan of Vikings. So that's exciting, and I'm, I'm, this is this is a cool conversation for me. Boris, uh, welcome to the show, and. Hello. Uh, uh, curious, how did you get into darts? Uh, I started to play uh, maybe 10 years before, but my father, uh, when I look first time at darts, it's uh, 1994 when my father started to play darts. But uh, I look at like uh, uh, just just game because I play basketball uh, on the team and I give all my time there. And I don't look uh, for the play the darts for a long time, you know, but everywhere when we go, we live in Russia, then we move to Greece for 10 years, then we come back again, 2010, I think, yeah, and uh, everywhere we have a board with us, darts board and uh, darts, uh, my father have it all, also, and uh, when we come back to Russia, I can play uh, basketball because I have a work, and I don't uh, have a time for practicing uh, three times a day because before I practice uh, morning, evening, and uh, a lot of a lot of time, you know, make four or five hours training. And I throw some darts at when I go back at my home, and I keep it. And uh, I play. I start to play good. Go some tournaments. My first tournament in Russia, I take third place. I say, okay, why not? And then I start to take it uh, normal, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you've had a, a relatively short career, but a very nice career, um, you know, so far in darts. And I have high hopes for where you're going to go with darts. Um, you know, I know today you're playing the UK Open for the second time. Uh, you got through the first round. Unfortunately, the second round just didn't go your way, but you were playing really good darts. Um, how did you feel about the UK Open this year versus last year? Last year, of course, we had crowds. It was a normal feel. This year, being behind closed doors, did it really feel the same, or how different was it? You know, when you are focused on your game, you don't hear nothing around you, What whatever. Have uh, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 people. Now it's also put some um, music, like uh, you hear some voice. But... When you are focused, you don't you don't feeling uh, people, the crowd, and for me it doesn't matter if have a people or don't have a people. I just look only my game, and uh, I played good the first game. Rusty lost some doubles. I take it, uh, but second game I'm three one up. Have two dice four one up. I lost it. I'm upset after this. Uh, I lost six four. Uh, last year also I lost first round six four. But play, not play good. That's why. But uh, I starting to play like a professional before maybe four years uh, when I signed contract with uh, my manager with the Zivia. You know, Jeff also play there, and Canadian guy uh, Dawson Dawson Marshall. Yeah, yeah, Dawson Marshall. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I start from. 2016 to traveling and then we signed 2017 in the end of the year and uh 2019 i go challenge tour i'm high in the ranking and uh go 26 or 24 player championship 
go to last eight there. I'm feeling good, but sometimes, you know, you, you know, uh, when you play good, you're feeling good. After five minutes, it's changing. Like, what's happened? You, you, you never know what when when they uh, come like this. Oh yeah, it happened to me last night in league. I was playing really well, and then I ended up losing. And, and I think I lost six four. As a matter of fact, yeah. Um, you throw 180, 180, 180, then forty five, forty five, and you you yeah. can't change nothing because you throw the same, you you feeling the same, you thinking the same, but now don't go in the triple, go everywhere, but not the triple, not the double. Yeah, yeah, I know the feeling. Um, definitely, I'm kind of curious. You know, you got you got your tour card this year. So are you? I mean, this is kind of it, right? You're just going to be playing out the the tour and and trying to make a, a stable go at it. Yeah, uh, I try yeah. to do every tour because I don't work now for two years. Uh, I just play darts, play some modus league when we have a quarantine, move every challenge tour before, and now. Uh, I survive for the card. I very wanted to take it, and I do it. And now nice. I'm hundred percent go everywhere, <laughs> everywhere where we have any tournament, any player championship, any qualify for Europe tours, for every tournament I go everywhere. Great, great. I'm I'm excited about that because I like your play. I like your, um, uh, what we would say pizzazz. Your your you know your excitement at the hockey. Uh, you've got great facial expressions. I know you don't see those, but we see them. And, and if you're a fun player to watch, you've got a really good personality. Um, I'm kind of curious. So you're a Russian um, darts player. How has, because like here in America, darts is still, we're like we have Danny. Danny Bagish is finally on tour. Um, but for Russia, you know, I know darts hasn't always been the sport, so to speak. Um, how is darts progressing in Russia? I think before maybe 1998, 1997, it's not uh, big because you you say correct, it's not a, like a sports sport. It's like a hobby more from for the Russian people. And also, we don't do the big progress because um, when you need to move somewhere, you need to go to Europe, and it's also expensive to fly there because. Every time you need to pay uh, flights, hotels, entry fee, you know, everything from your uh, your pocket. And this is hard. I do that for maybe five years. And this is very hard. And thank you for my family. And they every time support me and every time pay something for me because I also work and put all my money there. And because I live with my family, they support me and uh, work it and give me the money sometimes when I need it. And uh, I think that's why in Russia the DOS is not so big. But now, maybe for three, four years, uh, come a lot of people because watch the World Championship because they put on the on TV last maybe two, three years. They put it on TV, World Cup, World Championship. And some more tournaments have a PDC TV. A lot of people uh, take it and watch. And some some of the friends watch and say, oh, it's a good good game, fun, have a fun, and come to the tournaments. And uh, before maybe three years, we have a Russian championship with 120 people. Uh, last year, I didn't come because I have uh, COVID. <laughs> and I didn't come. And uh, two years before, we have uh, 240 people. We men's men's and yeah. plus women we go three hundred, but I never see so many people because maybe one hundred eighty eighty five, but now it's three hundred. Nice. But for the big Russia, you say is nothing. But you also need to traveling inside the Russia because from the one side to the other side it's nine thousand kilometers. You need to take a plane for nine hours, or you go with a train seven days. <laughs> It's not a joke. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I've heard. I have heard. I have not had the opportunity to go to Russia, but I'm excited to see that darts is is growing. It's becoming a global sport. It's going to take over soccer, what we call soccer or football. Um, 
you know, and I'm excited to see kind of where that goes. I wanted to talk briefly about um, the World Cup. You guys, uh, you got to play for Russia. You and your teammate pulled Wales uh, first round, which, of course, Wales won this year. Um, but during that tournament, you had a loss where your, your father passed away. And I know that Darts, you know, he kind of brought that to you. Uh, can you talk a little bit about kind of dealing with that, what that was like? And if you want to share a little bit about your dad, please feel free to. Yeah, now now I'm feeling uh, better after this. Yeah, but it's a uh, hard, hard loss for me. Uh, yeah, he's every time with me. He he support me. He he's my trainer when I play basketball. I also play on his team, and he uh, come come me inside the darts family, you know. And he also talked to me. Do it, do it, do. It. We do it and train more and more and more and more. Then that's, uh, you know, I mean, that's why I'm, it's about my father. Here, here I am. And uh, yeah, before the World Cup, uh, he had also COVID, but I have it before. And uh, he take it off because he worked at school, uh, like a teacher. Uh, and he take it from the school and he stayed at home two weeks with the COVID. And then he go harder and harder he don't breathe good normally he have a with a bloat something and they go to the hospital for four days and before one day i need to fly it uh, friday or uh, no i need to fly it saturday to the world cup i think something like this and friday morning we don't find him on the phone because we also speak on the whatsapp text 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 and Friday morning, we don't find him at 11 o'clock, 12, 1, 2. And I said to my mom, I take a car and I go to the hospital. I find I need to find him because tomorrow I fly. And I go there, there and I find him in the other hospital. He made an operation with his belly, something. And I'm crazy, you know, but I, I don't know what I can do. I fly or no, I stay home. And my mom and my wife say to me, okay he make the operation he need to stay maybe three four days inside the quarantine inside the after the operation you know and uh, she say you you can't sit here fly uh, go go to the world cup why not i think your father wanted and my mom my mom say also go and okay we call at night to the hospital they say he's a normal 50 50. I say okay. Uh, in the morning, I wake up. I take a taxi with my friend. He come from other town. He live with me. He stay with me one night in my home. We take the taxi. We go to the airport. Have some problem with uh, his visa. Then we have a problem with the paper because we need some paper from the PDC to fly it in Austria because of the quarantine again. And uh, when I sit on the before the check-in on the plane my mom called me and say my father died I say okay and what i can do she say you don't need to come now go there we we make everything here for two three days and when you come back uh, we we do it i say okay uh, but i i lost a little bit uh, myself you know and my friend come to me and he understand what's happened. He put me, we go to the plane, I come there. And I call to my manager when we take the luggage and uh, I say, I need to speak with you about something. And he say, what, what, what? I say, no, 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 when you come to the hotel, I need to speak with you because... Uh, he say, no, say it now. I say, that, that's uh, uh, my father. Yeah, my father died. And he say, uh, I find you flight now. You come. You go back. I say no, no chance, no chance. I think my father wanted to me. I play now, that this time because if I go now back, I, maybe I never play darts after that. And he say, okay, if you want something, call me. Just just call me when I come to the hotel. I need to speak with you. And I go to the hotel. Uh, stay there. Uh, next day we go for a game. 
I'm feeling good, but my body is not it's not good. I throw some very very uh, not good game from me, from my side. But we lost to the champions, but it's you know. It's yeah, a loss is always it's always hard. Yeah, it's always it's always yeah. hard. Yeah, but what we can do, we we stay we stay alive, and we we need to do it now this year. That's why I come to the Q school and I say, I I take the card now this year hundred percent. My wife say me, you sure you need to go? You want to go? I say hundred percent. I go there. I take my card, hundred percent, and I do it. Yep, you did. You got your card. I'm kind of curious. So you you were with another manufacturer. You recently signed with Shot Darts. What's the process been like creating a barrel uh, with Shot? You know the Shot family. I personally have a barrel um, with the Shot guys. I, I got to design my own barrel with them. Um, but what's the process been like as a professional designing a barrel? Uh, you know, uh, I speak with uh, guys from the shot, and I say I need this one, this one, and this one. Uh, I, I say what place I put my fingers, where what uh, grip I need there, what grip I need in front, and they make me some picture, some pictures like a three D photos, and I say I like this barrel. And after we do some colors, we put some logos, and that's it. And now I wait my uh, new darts. To take it on my hands and say if need some changes and they put it on uh, boxes for selling <laughs> yeah but but yeah we, we i think we do very nice job with the guys because before maybe five six years my friend oreshkin he also play shot darts but he don't have a contract but he buy some darts and uh, he play with them and i see the quality and i like it you know and i Speak to my manager before uh, four or five months because we stop uh, with windmill because of we stop it, okay? Yeah. Yep. And you say when you want to go now? I say you prefer me something. You are uh, you are the boss, you know. And you say maybe shot because I put the Tony Alcinas there and he also like it. I speak with Tony. I say how is how is your darts? How you because for me important the darts for other uh, questions is manager you know i just want the darts that's what is yeah. important for the player you know and uh, i say to will yeah if if they want me i go there no problem and we speak with him after two weeks he say yeah uh, we we do it. uh he send me the contract he says everything okay i say is everything okay <laughs> Because I ask him, you, you read it, it's okay? He say, yeah, 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 sign. And we signed the contract and uh, after we started to make the darts. But nice. uh, we do very nice job. I think uh, the guys uh, put it uh, the, the good ways because I say, I play with 21 gram, but 21 gram is not uh, the popular ways in the darts. You know, every people want 23, 24 grams. And that's why I say, if you want to do two ways it's good if you want to do only one for me personally you did you did some 22 grams and 21 maybe because i i don't know i wanted also to change my ways because sometimes when you play all the day after you don't feeling your darts and 21 it's too too light too too small for me after seven eight hours when you're playing and i say maybe we do 23 for selling and maybe I play with it. Oh, nice. But it's nice. And yeah, I hope I'm, everybody will like it. I'm sure they will. And it's going to be part of the Viking line, which I personally like. Um, I know I play a 21 gram barrel. Um, you know, there are of course players out there that play with lighter darts and heavier darts. Um, it's, it's a personal choice. I have had a great time working with the guys over at Shot. I've been able to speak with Peter uh, and Emma and, and and just the whole group over there, Gavin and Pete, and just a good company. They really love the darts community. So I don't think you could have signed with anybody better. Uh, I'm happy that you're you're part of the team. I've 
kind of watch, you know, I try and keep an eye on most of the darts players out there in the community. And I've you know, watched some of what you've done, of course, at the World Cup. Um, and I like your style of play. I think you're going to find that their darts are going to do really well for you. And hopefully this will be a, a stellar year for you. Um, I don't want to keep you much longer. I know you're in the UK right now at the UK Open and um, probably want to go drink a little bit of vodka. Um <laughs> Hey, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure that's on the the idea for you. You know, I can't do it just yet. It's still afternoon for me. But I just, Boris, thank you for being uh, on here. I had one last question. This comes from my son, uh, my oldest son. He's 22. He's been watching Russian slap boxing on YouTube. Ooh. Is this <laughs> yeah, a real thing? Is yeah. it real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, sla Russian slap boxing is a real. It's a real activity. Yeah. yeah. Have you have you ever played? They do it like a UFC in uh, UK US. They okay. do the slapping like a UFC. You no, know, they make a big show for that. And nice. also they put someone from outside if you want to uh, play with uh, any guy. But the guy is 170, 180 kilo, and if he slap you, you're <laughs> you, you lost your name after that. <laughs> So you've never played? No, 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 no. I'm not so crazy. You, you should get a game going in the back room with all the darts players, you know? <laughs> get Gerwin, Gerwin involved and Peter and, you know, I think uh, um, uh, John Henderson will play. Uh, you know, he's a big guy. Yeah, and John Michael also. He have a hand uh, two times bigger than me. That's uh, he true. Also, he also a big guy, yeah. Big guy, too. Well, Boris, again, thank you so much for, for coming on to Coffee and Darts and hanging out with us. Welcome to the SHOT team. Again, I don't want to keep you any longer. Uh, enjoy your evening. Um, go do whatever you guys do at 10 o'clock at night uh, during a tournament, and uh, we'll be watching you play. Thanks again for being on the show. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Boris. Have a good one. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, I had a great time talking with Boris. We talked <clears throat> a little bit longer than that, but um, I want to let him go. They they were going to dinner. It was uh, after 10 o'clock when I had an opportunity to, to sit down and talk with him, or he had an opportunity to actually stop and, and sit down and talk. It, it, it's amazing. I don't think we really grasp the, the concept of how long a day is for, for darts players. Um, and it's it's interesting. I was I, I had lunch with Peter uh, Satera, who is the CEO of uh, Championship Dart Circuit. Uh, he was in town here in, in the San Diego area, and I got to go have lunch. We spent a couple hours having lunch, just talking, you know, about Champ Darts and some of the things that are up and coming. And it's it's going to be incredible stuff. We talked about Boris. He actually um, told me that he was with Boris, you know, at the World Cup when all of the stuff with his dad was happening. Uh, he happened to be over talking with Jeff Smith and Boris, who's with the same management company, was with Jeff Smith, you know, during this, you know, that first night. And and Peter mentioned that he happened to stop in to see Jeff and, and you know, got to talk to Boris. And um, it happened to be the same day that I did the interview. So it all kind of worked out. Um, but in any case, um, just some interesting aspects that I got in regards to the life of a darts player. And we were talking about the health of darts players. Cause that's always been a thing for me. And you know, like I need to slim up a little, but I think, you know, as we're seeing certain darts players, Luke Humphreys, you know, he's lost <clears throat> equivalent of two stones, whatever that weight wise is. I, I looked it up before, but I don't, I don't remember, but you know, some of the darts and younger darts players are taking a look at the health aspects but in talking with Peter and some of these other players, uh, the idea is they they literally are going for 12, 14 hours a day in hotels. They, for the most part, stay in those hotels, uh, especially if you're a bigger name player. You don't, you know, over in the UK, that would be like Tom Brady buzzing around <clears throat> Las Vegas or, you know, like, you know, when stars go buzz around Vegas or walking around LA, everybody gets googly eyed. Well, over in the UK, darts players, professional darts players that's kind of what it's like for them especially that that you know the top 20 players and so forth and um you know if you're not necessarily there you can you can buzz around town 
when it's not a COVID issue and probably not be as recognized or have the issues, um, you know, but in regards to what's going on right now, they're kind of stuck. So we just had this conversation and it was really fascinating, interesting to, to understand exactly, you know, how much they're, they're kind of stuck eating hotel food. Um, and we joked, you know, like Peter and I joked about having, um, a, a kind of like a workout trailer workout type thing for champ darts as that progresses and we get back to actual physical darts play this year. And that was part of our conversation, but um, really, really good guy, Boris, uh, really nice guy. And uh, I, I think he's going to do well in darts. One of the things he didn't get too much into and in, in, in our next conversation, we're going to pull this out because I will interview him again. Um, there's some questions that I have for him in regards to Russian darts. And we kind of dove into it slightly, but what he didn't get into is, you know, darts in Russia really, you want to say it's a pub game. Like it wasn't even a pub game um, type of thing. It it just wasn't even a, it it was an afterthought at best. And in the last little while, it's become something that is, is more prevalent. It's, it's visible. It's, it's, you know, seen, as far as darts go and people like Boris being able to players like Boris being able to get a tour card and stuff is really pushing darts forward in Russia. Uh, And he and I talked briefly before we did the interview a little bit about that. He's trying to help the youth and bring darts as a prominent sport within the Russian Federation or in in Russia itself. And um, it's, I, you know, it, it was kind of an exciting thing. We didn't dive into it as much in the in the interview, but he's doing some cool stuff. And you know, we in America think, oh, darts. You know, you know, it sucks for us. For them, they're they're like just really gaining ground in, in any shape or form. Like Devin Peterson can talk to that. You know, with with darts in in, in the African countries, how that, you know. It, it takes someone like a Devin Peterson to really bring it to light. It takes someone like a, um, you know, Danny for us, you know, he got a write up in the New York times and there's a real big push, uh, to, you know, within darts. And as, as long as we can keep it going as a community, I think we'll be okay. And I think the U S is going to produce some great players. Um, well, thanks Austin. Hopefully I'm going to get Matt Edgar on here. We keep talking about it. Um, <clears throat> Hopefully we'll get Matt in regards to uh, get get him on there. Oh, you weren't saying good. You were saying good review to Scottish that. See, I can't read and talk at the same time. It's a bad thing. But um, guys, as we land the plane, as I so to speak here on this uh, show today, uh, thanks guys for hanging out. Um, I think Boris that was a good interview. Again, we're gonna try and do that next week. There's a couple interviews that I've got scheduled for this week, but we're gonna be doing a girls' power hour. We're, I'm talking with Jen from Magic Wear, uh, Jen Mounts, and we're scheduling a couple ladies. We're going to try and do an international. So we're going to get like uh, Tori Kuish and I think some one of the other ladies from uh, one of the other countries together. And we're going to talk women's darts from an international perspective. And then we're going to grab some of the ladies from here in North America and do more of a North American one the following week because it is women's international month and of course yesterday being women's international day uh we do want to spend some time talking with the ladies and i would like to have more ladies on because i like their perspective of what's going on in darts but look for those interviews and because i'm now doing this new style where i tape it and then play it um i've always loved the live aspect um but we're doing it this way i can do recordings based on different times. Um, I've got Ryan Murphy. Uh, that's coming in a new shot player as well. Uh, a recent tour card holder as well. And so fairly recent. We'll be talking with him in regards to darts. And there's a number of other people. I'm trying to get Matt Edgar to come on. I'd really love to have the Matt and Matt show uh, make that happen. So <clears throat> those of you that know Mr. Edgar, you know, he's got a little time right now before Super Series. Maybe he and I can get together and chat it up. So Ryan Murray, did I say I said Murphy, didn't I? Murray. Yeah, I thought someone would catch that. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Ben. I appreciate that. Um, but in any case, sorry. Um, 
Hey guys, I uh, appreciate you for watching the, the show. I'm going to land this thing. Don't forget to check out Atomic Darts. You know, we've got some barrels there. We've got jerseys. We've got hats, other merchandise. It does help when you guys um, do decide to purchase some stuff to help uh, forward along what we're doing here. Uh, I've got a bunch of product that I'm working on reviews with and should be popping up over the next couple of weeks. Some cool stuff, some travel stuff as we get back to traveling. There's a couple of different travel dart boards out there and a travel bag um to uh to by mission that i'm gonna go i've got it sitting here i'm gonna review that here and some other really cool products some new cases that have hit the market and some other nice things that are starting to hit shelves as this year progresses so i'll be showing that stuff to you guys all right guys and scottish lad says he'll be on this show as soon as his laptop situation gets sorted out um scottish lad love to have you on uh i think that'll be great conversation as well. So everybody have a beautiful day. Enjoy your Tuesday. Um, just have fun, play some darts and enjoy it. Uh, don't get too stressed out about it, but just have some fun. And you can always, you know, put someone else's hand up on the board and throw for it. It'll make you feel better. <clears throat> Thanks guys. Uh, have a wonderful day. I'm going to uh, take off and go do some stuff with kids, get them to school and uh, get myself to work. But thanks again, guys. I will see you on the next one.